Over 400 miles away in the far northwest of Cumbria is the small community of Silif. Their lifeboat station only had 10 call-outs last year. If we start locally, the, the changes that are happening now is the main bank off of the slipway is moving down. Um, that could cause a problem for us launching at low water. Helm Steve is the most experienced crew member here, with 30 years volunteering under his belt. Generally through the solway, the, the, the tide gets up to about four knots, but um, up sort of past Annan, it's up to 10 knots, which is dangerous for anybody, even in a fast boat. The Silith patch covers the Solway Firth, an estuary leading out to the rough and unpredictable Irish Sea. It's infamous for fast tides and shifting sandbanks. On a day like today, the Solway's beautiful. It's, it's actually set in a, an area of outstanding natural beauty, and you can see why, um, but it hides the, the dangers. It's constantly changing, very dynamic. Sandbanks move, the channels move, the depth of the channels change. It is said that parts of the Solway, the tide comes in quicker than a man can run. The sea can flood in at over eight miles an hour off Silith. The power of the water constantly shifting the local sandbanks, leaving large parts of the Solway uncharted. I don't think anybody ever knows the Solway. You can catch anybody out, anybody who thinks they know the Solway. Um, that can be caught out. A still February day. An emergency call comes in to Silith Lifeboat Station. Within six minutes of being paged, the crew have their B-class inshore lifeboat on the water. The only information that we had was that there was a lady trapped in her vehicle. She was about six miles down the coast, and we didn't know how far out she was. A car driven onto a local beach has been swamped by the fast rising tide, trapping the driver. At that point, we find out she's a non-swimmer. The sense of urgency goes through the roof. Every job we get is time critical to a degree. But for a non-swimmer who ends up in the solway with the tides that is, then seconds count. To make matters worse, today is a spring tide, when water floods into the estuary at its fastest and hits its highest level, rising over 30 feet at a rate of six feet an hour. The force of the water is, is going to be pushing the car, so the car is likely to be moving. Is she in the water? Is she still attached to the vehicle in some way? And you are hoping and praying you're going to be there in time. Since the call came in, the waters in the Solway have already risen over a foot and a half. Even at a top speed of 35 knots, the crew are struggling to beat the tide. You just want to be there. You want time to fast forward and you to be there and you to spot this person uh, and get them in the boat, but you can only go as fast as the boat will go. And now they face another delay. Between them and the casualty lies one of the Solway's most treacherous stretches. You don't want to be inside the shore side of Beckford Boy. It's full of large and small rocks. Some of them are big van sized. The crew must navigate through the huge rocks just under the surface as fast as they dare. Hitting these rocks or the boulders risks damage to our boat or the engines, and then we're no good to anybody. We need to go slowly, which you don't want to do. You want to be there. Suddenly, just as they clear the rocks, they spot a figure in the water. When she phoned the Coast Guard, the water was, you know, up to the, to the height of the window, and we, we got there 12 minutes, and the, the water was over and on the roof of the car. She was clinging on for, for a dear life. It was um, just quite shocking how far she is off, off the coastline and how quickly the, the, the tide had come in. When we got closer to the casualty, I actually recognised who the casualty was. 
Caroline's often on the beach, nine times out of ten, she'll be with her husband who is severely disabled. The priority now is to find out if the casualty's husband is trapped in the submerged car. I looked at Steve and said, shall I go in? And he just gave me the nod and I just went straight in. I got hold of the inside lip of the bonnet. The windows were open, so I'm giving the car a good sweep. I'm, I've got my arm right in as far as I could possibly go. Uh, I can feel the, the headrest of the front seat, the passenger seat. You are dreading the possibility of touching somebody. Was very, very, very pleased there wasn't anybody. And that, and that was a big relief. Having confirmed there's no one inside the vehicle, Andy swims the casualty back to the boat. As she's brought aboard, her car is completely engulfed by the tide. If we'd got it any later than we did, we would then be looking for a non-swimmer in the water. When we're talking about time critical incidents, this was tight. Caroline had driven onto the beach at low water searching for her lost dog. But as she tried to get back to shore, her car was caught on rocks. The tide seemed to just come from nowhere quite fast and furious. It was pouring in. I managed to dial 999 and they put me through to the Coast Guard and she said to me, can you get out of the car? I said, yeah, of course I can get out of the car. And when I tried to open the door to get out, I couldn't open the door. When I looked out of the window, water was up the side of the door. After I had said that to the lady, we got cut off. I thought the only thing I can do now is get myself onto that roof and hopefully the, the tide won't uh, go any higher than the roof before I got rescued. The vehicle was starting to sway backwards and forwards and it was very slippery up there. It was hard maintaining my position on the roof. I took one last look round. Everything looks so huge. I was miles away from the shoreline and there was nobody. Nobody, and that was at that point when I felt really all alone. All alone, nobody here. And uh, I didn't think that we were going to make it. It had reached that point where I was going to have to hit the water. I felt as though I heard something, and when I looked around, I could see the life lifeboat heading towards me, <laughs> and I felt a real relief. We know subsequently that she was ready to go into the water over half a mile, tide running at five knots. A non-swimmer, no chance. Minutes later, then um, it would have been a completely different outcome. Caroline was treated for shock and hypothermia. A missing dog made her own way safely back to shore. I will be eternally and forever thankful to them all. If it wasn't for the split second timing of those RNLI guys coming along at the right moment. Because it was minutes really before things could have turned out to be a lot worse. <laughs>